Chapter 10, verse 13 says, Wisdom is on the lips of him who has understanding. But the rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Oh, don't you see that the wisdom of God that comes from the Holy Spirit of heaven, oh, that it's on the lips of those who believe in Jesus Christ, those who preach the good news, gospel of peace, truth found in Christ. You see, I can tell when people aren't following Jesus because what comes out of their mouth. They say that God is love, love is one. He made an idol out of love. God is God. God is love, but, but love is not God. You see, that's your mistake. You see, God is holy. God is holy and righteous and pure. He's too pure to behold the evil. He's calling to you, warning you. Oh, it is not willing that any should perish, but that you would come to repentance. But you see, why won't you repent? Isn't God worthy of your life? Jesus said in all four Gospels, John 12, Matthew 16, Mark 8, and Luke 9, He who seeks to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospel will keep it for eternal life, Jesus said. I want you to retain your life. I want you to keep your life. Don't you see? May the God of Jacob send you help from the sanctuary. May the name of the Lord our God bless you, keep you, lift up his countenance upon you. No. Jesus Christ, if he was standing here, he would burn you up. He would burn you up. The Bible says he's going to destroy the wicked. He's going to consume them with the brightness of his coming. He's going to destroy them by the sword of his mouth, the spirit of his mouth. Yeah, you see? You see, the wicked, they, they bite and devour one another. That's what you're doing. When you commit this kind of sin, this iniquity, you're devouring one another. Beware. Beware, lest you be consumed by one another. Uh, the fulfillment of the law is love, yes. Yes, the fulfillment is the law. But love does no harm to a neighbor. You're harming your neighbor. You're harming yourself. You're committing self-degradation. Uh, but I still think that there's somebody in this crowd. Maybe one. Maybe one out of a hundred. Maybe one out of a thousand. Maybe. I'm hopeful. I hope for you. I don't lose hope. I tell you, I know the word of God never returns void, folks. Somebody preached to me. Somebody blessed me with the scriptures. Are you being blessed in, the, in all the sin that you're committing? Why do you love what is evil? Why? I, 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 look, look, I understand you're, you're angry. You're angry. God, God's wrath is upon you, and you're upset about it. You know you're marijuana. You're losing your money. You're losing your, you can't breathe. You can't, your, your swallowing is getting all messed up. You're smoking, dry throat. You know, you get the toe on your finger. You know, you, you, you're worried about the police catching you, but you got God. You got God. The Bible says, the Bible says that God's going to chase them with his angel. Do you know that evil pursues sinners? There's a man named evil prowling around the street. Better watch out, man. He's a roaring lion. He'll come and get you. He might take your soul. Don't you see that your soul's on the line today? First Peter chapter 2 verse 11 says, Oh, I, have, I, I beg you, I beg you as sojourners to abstain from fleshly lust which wage war against your soul. Your soul is in a war right now. It's a battle going on. It's raging inside of you. You don't understand that right now, the conviction is strong. Oh, you want to throw things at the preacher, but you don't understand this is the love of God that I would be here and endure that. I would put myself on the line. Oh, the Bible says in John chapter 24, chapter 12, verse 24, it says, unless a corn of wheat dies, it abides alone. But if it falls into the ground and dies, it bears much fruit. Oh, I want you to be that corn of wheat. I want you to be... Right here, right here, officer. He's the one doing it right here. Right here. Well, you should. He's guys assaulting me. I'm not helping you out. You should. It's your job to help me out. I'm killing this out. I'm out. Oh, well, you should help me out. You're it's, judging. It's good. You're the one that's going to go to hell. Look, the first You're Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 says, A spiritual man judges all things. But he himself is rightly judged of no man. Look, I give you a righteous judgment. I tell you to turn to Jesus Christ. That's a good thing. It's good to turn to Jesus. It's good to repent of homosexuality. To put to death the deeds of the flesh. Then you will live, the Bible says. I want you to live. Don't you know? He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son shall not see life. He has the witness in himself, Jesus Christ. The Bible says whoever believes in the Son of God, he has the witness in himself. The testimony... There's three testimonies. The Bible says every truth is established by two or three witnesses. The Holy Spirit comes in. He's a, he's a seal, it says. 
and to the redemption of the purchased possession, to the praise of his glory, to the praise of the glory of God. Don't you want the glory of God protecting you, lifting you up? There's glory. I experience, I worship God in the spirit. The Bible says if anybody's to worship God, he must worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit of God. It says he's, a, he's true. He's true. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they're not flesh. They are not flesh. They are spirit. The words that I speak to you, they're spirit and they're life. I speak to you the same spirit, the same life that Jesus spoke. Oh, that you would rise from the dead. As Jesus said, forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. I say that for you. I don't look, I don't want him to charge this sin with you. This day of revelry, this day of drunkenness. I want you to come until the morning star rises in your heart. Oh, the morning star. That's the place where Jesus Christ brings you from the dead, lifts you up out of the grave. Oh, the Bible, Jesus said in John 5, do not marvel at this, for the time will come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and they will rise, Jesus said. They will rise. And the Bible says that, they, that some will awake to the resurrection of, of condemnation, those who have done evil. This is in the verse 29 in your Bible. Those who have done evil will awake to the resurrection of condemnation, but to those who have done good. Good in Christ. Everything's in Christ. Jesus gets the glory. Oh, Jesus won. Jesus won. No, you make an idol out of love. You love what is evil. You hate what is good. You gotta love God. That's the commandment. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Are you loving God with your with, with everything in you? Are you seeking God? With, God doesn't hate. You disagree with the Bible. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 5, verse 5, God is angry with the way God hates all workers of iniquity. God loved Mary Magdalene. Hey, look, look, if you're in war, if you're in war and somebody kills, somebody kills one of your fellow soldiers, you would hate that person enough to go out and give vengeance. Oh, yeah, you'd go after them. God hates his enemies. Look, if you came into my house and, 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 and uh, injured my wife, look, there'd be some hate involved. It says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to hate. There's a time for war. And there's a time for peace. There's a time to cast away stones and gather stones. There's a time to tear into men. There's a time to plant and pluck what is planted. There's a time to love and to hate. You don't understand. You're out, you're out of alignment with the timing. You have no Kairos moment in your life. Look at you, man. Look at how angry you are. What's wrong? What happened to you? I'm passionate. I have the Holy Spirit crying out in me. You got to be reconciled to God. You got to turn to God. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you living for? Living for a buzz? Living for a good time? Living for a trick? Oh, you've been, you, you've been tricked. You have been tricked. You've been deceived. He's the great deceiver. Do you know that? Look, the Bible says, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, let nobody deceive you with empty words. There's empty words, vain words. It's like this empty balloon. You got all this air. It's hot air. That's what it says. Let no one deceive you with empty words. The pastors and the church say that you can pray this prayer, still, still have butt sex. No, that, that's a lie. But you have to repent, man. That's what you get to do. If you don't repent, you're going to perish. And you're not going to get to the next step. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, it says, Godly sorrow brings about repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of. Three steps. Three steps. For all you people who want the process of salvation, you got three steps. Godly sorrow. You fear God. You turn to God. You mourn before God. You say, God, help me. Help me. I've sinned against you. I've transgressed the holy commandment. I've turned my, my glory into shame. How long? How long, O oh you sons of men, will you turn my glory into shame, the Bible says? How long will you love, how long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Do you have a Bible? It's in my heart, right here. No, man, I love you. I care for you, man. You don't understand. I've been where you've been. I've sat in darkness. I had heart failure. I, was, I had four felonies for selling drugs. I was trapped, bound up in iniquity, living in the shadow, the darkness, the shame, the pain, the guilt. Everything was falling apart. My whole life, everything. My, my finances, my marriage, everything was gone. I thought I was dead. I thought I was a dead man. And then the love of God, praise God, I'm here to give to Jesus Christ. 
I tell you, he can do it. It's quick. He's powerful. He comes quickly. The Bible says he shakes the foundations at the blast of the breath of his nostril. God can shake these foundations of homosexuality that you built your house upon. You have built your house upon the foundation of homosexuality. God can shake it down to the ground. He can change, he can change your wicked mouth. you got to sue her for a mouth. Well, look, the heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge. But it says the mouth of the fool pours forth foolishness. Feeds on foolishness. Proverbs 15, verse 14. Folks, it's serious. We cry out to you, even the officers. I cry out to you. I care for all flesh. I care for you. I want you to see you to be born again. you got to be born again. You're not born again living this lifestyle. Look, Jesus, Jesus, who is God, do you believe, do you believe Jesus is God? I believe he's God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the Lord of glory. He's, he's the blessed and only potentate. He is the he's the one and true, he's the faithful and true witness. He's the eternal life. Jesus said, I am eternal life, Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, You've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus said, I, I and the Father are one, Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said, Jesus said, Oh, it says to him who he who was, to he who is, and to he who is to come, the Almighty. He is the Almighty. He's the Most High. He's the Lord of He's the Lord of Hosts. He's the Ancient of Days. Oh, do you see? Don't you know that He is the one to whom everything is? He's the Creator God. He's the He's the Father God. He's the King, a immortal, eternal, invisible. He alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light. You're gonna You're gonna come near to Jesus in your sin and think that you're gonna gonna have some sort of case against Him. Why you didn't give me enough to believe? And Jesus can say, man, you lied. You're lying. Why do you, why do you boast in mischief, almighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue frames deceit like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love a speaking evil more than to speak good, a lie than to speak righteousness, Selah. Oh, but God will pluck you out of your dwelling place and root you out of the land of the living. I, you're still living. I praise God that you're still here. Obama isn't hit. Obama has hit. Obama has hit. But a bomb hasn't hit yet. A bomb has not hit, but Obama hit. And now you need to hit the ground. You need to stop, drop, and roll before Jesus Christ. Stop your sinning. Drop to the ground. God doesn't hate. He hates you. And roll up all your wicked things and throw them in the garbage. Look, there's a lake of fire coming. Why do you? Why, why are you doing this? Why do you cut your hair? You women are supposed to have hair for a covering. You're trying to be a guy. You're trying to have. Look, there's 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 order with God. There's order. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be a nurturing mother. God wants you to be a nurturing mother to have to be a to be a mother to the fatherless. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter one it says they do not defend the fatherless. Nor does the cause of the widow come before them. No. You know it says um, it says that their princes are rebellious. They are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loves bribes and follows after rewards. Oh, but God says this. God says, I will restore your judges at the first. Oh, yes, and afterwards you'll be called the city of righteousness, the city of justice. Oh, yeah. How the faithful city, how the faithful city has become a harlot. Righteousness lodged in it. It was full of justice, but now thieves, now thieves. Oh, but God, God's going to do a mighty work. You know, it says this, it says in Acts chapter 13, it says, Oh, behold, you despisers, marvel and perish. For I will work a work in your days that you will by no means believe the one were to declare it to you. I'm gonna t I tell you, you're gonna see something happen. Now that they've transgressed and enrolled, uh, they they've tried to they tried to change the marriage laws in America. You're gonna see some stuff start to happen. You know that? Did you know something's gonna happen? Something's coming. Something serious is gonna happen. You you not you can't bear it up. You gotta turn to Jesus. Be the escape. Escape from the. Escape from the one who, who, who's blinded you. That's what happens to people who live in sin. They're blinded. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Your soul is on the line. That matters. Look, the Bible says that they that God might grant them repentance, that they might escape the snare of the devil who's taken them captive to do his will. I get, I get terrified when I read that scripture and I think about people who are captive. They are captive. But there's the good news. Here's the good news. The Bible says he ascended on high. He led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. You see, the gifts of God are without, are without repentance. That doesn't mean that you get the free gift of salvation, you don't have to repent. That means that God gives a gift, 
and he gives it, and he doesn't change his mind about it. But you got to repent. You see, you think that you don't have to repent, and that's why you're living in sin. What church? What church did you go to? Who's the Who's the ungodly pastor? Who it, was it? Your parents? Was it your parents who said, "Oh, it's okay. Just don't, don't be ashamed. Come out of the closet." No. Why did God make hermaphrodites? Look. Oh, no answer. Come back to nice. Why did God make dinosaurs? Look, I don't have all the answers, but I know Jesus Christ is the answer. I'm not God. I'm just a messenger. I, I tell you this, though. You need to follow the Holy Spirit. You need to follow Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus. Repent and obey. Anybody out here want to repent? Anybody out here want to take seriously? Anybody out want to fear God? That you might escape? Turn. Turn and believe. Look, man, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm passionate about your soul. There's great love, great forgiveness. Great grace can be upon you today. You can be blessed beyond belief. And not this type of blessing that, you know, you just get rich and, you know, you got airplanes to just fly around on. And, you know, you might just go to all these, these wicked concerts if you had all this money to spend and do a bunch of drugs. You know, God wants to give you eternal life. God wants to give you, you know, Jesus said he was faithful in what is least is also faithful in what is much. He who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in what is much. So, so if, you, if you want more from God, if you want God to give you abundant life, then be faithful in the little things. Be faithful in that still, small voice that's convicting you. Say, okay, God, okay, I will submit. I will resist the devil, submit to God, and he will flee from me. That's what, Jesus, that's what the Bible says. It says, you resist the devil, submit yourselves to God, and he'll flee from you. Not to judge others. Not to judge others. No, look, I give you righteous judgment. Look, well, the only people who have a problem with preaching uh, and say there's judgmental are people that don't think that God's going to judge them on judgment day. I'm not your judge. I'm pronouncing you what the Bible says. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, no, 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 that's, that's not one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not judge. Jesus said, when you judge, use a righteous judgment. I'm giving you a good judgment. Does my, does, does my speech sound judgmental to you? I'm giving you a Bible verse just pouring out my heart to you. Telling you about how, how much grace God gave me and talking about the, the fury of God. God is furious with the wicked. The Bible says he's going to pour out his fury like fire, it says. The rocks are thrown down by him. It just happens. It just happens. The Bible says you have not come to the mountain that can be touched and that burned with fire into blackness and darkness and tempest. Oh, it says to the, to the sound of a trumpet and to the voice of words. To the, those that heard it, they begged and said that the other word should not be spoken to us because it was terrifying. It was terrifying when God showed up on the mountain. But you know what? You know what? you got to enter into the glory of God. At some point in time, you're going to have to face the one who shocks you. He grabs a hold of you. God, that's what he does. He says, give me my spirit back. Give me my life back. What are you doing? God's going to call you to account. And you're going to be terrified. You're going to be gripped with fear. You're going to be wishing wishing that your heart was purified by Jesus Christ. Can you give him